Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I am the King of Boogie Fab, and this is going to be the first in a series of completely kid-friendly videos. And what I mean by that is we all like the hot rods and the rat rods, big fabrication projects, but I want to attack something that we can all appreciate with our kids. If you are a kid, go get mom and dad. Show them this video. You're going to want to tune in for this. I'm going to break down the simplest way possible how to build yourself a rat rod go-kart. Starting with a wheelbarrow, maybe this motor, maybe something else. I'm going to break down the options though. I'm going to show you how to do it with minimal fab skills without any super fancy equipment. I'm going to go through all of the safety procedures. I want to teach you little guys how to do this right so that you and mom and dad can follow along at home and do this yourself. And like everything I do, it's going to be on a budget. So uh, do me a favor. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the video, share it around. Drop me a comment. Give me some feedback. This project is for the kids. So uh, let's have some fun with it. So I know someone's going to ask, why a wheelbarrow? And uh, I'll tell you, it's really simple. If you guys pause this video for a minute and go over to Google Images and search rat rod wheelbarrow go-kart, any combination of those terms, you're going to end up with a whole lot of images of people who have taken wheelbarrows, cut one end off, rotated up to make a cowl. All right, guys. And turned this into the base of what looks very similar to a tea bucket. And my personal opinion, although they're not my favorite car, is that a tea bucket is honestly probably the most iconic hot rod ever made um i mean i'm talking great big drag slicks a big block fender dump headers skinnies up front open roof you're just out there unprotected super light it was always that car no matter where we were at what car whatever car show we were at that got me excited and uh, I, I think that's a good reason to build it. I, don't, I didn't want to build a go-kart that was just a metal flame frame blasting down the road. I wanted to do something over the top with the kids. And uh, I think this is a good way to do it. I think we're going to end up with something that they can be proud of, that we can take to car shows, we can drive in parades. I might go get the mail with it. Um, but at the end of the day, it's something we can show off. And it's not going to take that much more work than just building something basic. So that's the goal. So the first step here is, this is really rusty. This is really beaten. Um, we're going to remove it from the frame, get the frame off to the side, get this down on the ground so that we can see what we're working with. Okay, guys. Anytime it is metal... Anything sharp, anything moving, anything we're worried about the little guys getting their hands cut on. I mean, basic rules when we're out in the shop, we're working on the cars, we're using tools. No shorts. Full length pants. Long sleeves, preferably. It keeps the sparks off of them. Gloves. And I'm really bad for this one myself. This series, we're really going to focus on making sure I... I push that point home. It's really important. Um, safety glasses. Um, I just ordered a whole bunch of extra ones. So the kids all got them. Um, we want to make sure to keep the little guys as safe as possible. Kids, this stuff here, this is stuff mom and dad, they're going to have to help you out with. Um, get the grown up that is helping you do this to do the stuff like this. Um, Things like grinders. My kids can use grinders once they have the wrist strength for it. And once I find a guard to put back on, I 
keep the guards off my grinders. This is bad. Just pretend you didn't see this for right now. Um, if I'm using it like this, the kids aren't allowed to be beside it, and the kids aren't allowed to use it without the guard. So, first step, I'm, as an adult, going to cut these bolts off. They're beyond undoing, so I'm just going to cut them off. And uh, we'll get this marked out. But yeah, gloves, glasses, pants, sleeves. Get all your skin covered up. Take care of your little bodies. You got a lot of a lot of years left. So, I mean, as you guys can see, it's pretty beaten, you know, it's, uh, it's free. And, uh, I'm sure you guys could all find free wheelbarrows where you are too. And realistically, I mean, if you pay 20 bucks for a wheelbarrow and you get this much metal, as somebody that buys metal all the time, I can't buy this much tin for $20, let alone it's all formed. So, uh, a couple of bucks on this wouldn't hurt. This one was free, so it doesn't hurt to cut it up and get everything sitting how we like it. And uh, we can reevaluate if it's good enough to keep in later. But for right now, this is what we're going to use. Now, with it sitting down on the ground like this, you can see, I mean, it, it's got a shape. But the big thing is, is this is going to look like a car. We need a firewall and a cowl. So what we're going to do is we're probably going to cut back, say, I don't know, about that eight inch mark here, just below the bend, and uh, cut that off, roll this up. I'll probably get this tack welded onto there, and that way I can, that way we have a visual. Um, I like visuals on things. I like having something to start with, and, uh, this is an easy one. I mean, we can cut this, we can give it a quick tack weld and we can see how it's going to look. And then we can start looking at some other components on this and uh, show you exactly where this plan is going. But uh, so I'm going to throw some safety gear back on and I'm going to give this a quick cut. Um, this one's not super critical because really it's bent and we're going to move some stuff around. We're going to fill some metal in later. So for right now, all we want to do is kind of get it nipped off and uh, take a look at it.
Okay, guys, so a couple of basics here. We're gonna uh, we're gonna throw a couple of tack welds on these. So a tack weld is just a really short weld, one spot pretty much, just to hold it together temporarily. Now you can't weld rusty metal or painted metal. Um, it just doesn't take it, it. It doesn't work. So what we need to do, you can see. I've gone along and I've cleaned it up and we want nice shiny silver metal. This is what we want to weld. Um, something like a stick welder is more forgiving. Um, and if you're working with something like a TIG, well, you're probably not watching this, but in that case, it's got to be infinitely times more cleaner. I'm using a MIG with flux core wire, which means I don't need gas. This is pretty much one of the simplest ways for somebody to weld at home. This plugs into a outlet on the wall. Uh, it's a really cost effective machine, especially nowadays. And uh, it's something you guys can do, but we got to start with clean metal. And I, I, I need to, I can't stress it enough. Now, my kids have all been welding since they were little. You need welding masks, you need gloves. Basically what a welder is doing is it's using electricity to melt metal. That is the shortest explanation. It's heating it up so much that it melts together and a, a MIG is adding metal to it. It's feeding metal into the melted metal so that everything sticks together. It's like a hot glue gun made of metal. Now it puts off a crazy amount of heat. It puts off UV light. It will burn you like a summer day. And if you look at the flash, it will blind you. Um, it can actually make you go permanently blind. Um, it's not something to mess around with. It's something that with the kids around, it's always scary because everybody wants to stare at the bright light. And on the screen where you are, it's not a big deal, but uh, in person, this can, this can hurt you really badly. So if you guys are welding, everybody's got to get out of sight of the light if they are not wearing a welding helmet. And you can go pick up, this one's auto dark, but you can go pick up a basic plastic helmet for $20. There's no reason not to have them for the kids if you guys are welding with them. We've got helmets for the kids here. Um, there's no reason not to. So anybody that's inside of the ark, wear a helmet. And uh, if you don't have the extra helmets, just ask the kids to step outside or step inside or wherever for a minute so you can get a couple of tack welds on it. If you don't have a welder, it's not the end of the world because I guarantee you that somebody on your street, up the street, the local muffler shop, whatever, they will help you out. Explain to them what you're doing and that you need a couple of tack welds done or you need some welding done, period. If you talk to people in the community, they'll help you out with this. I know that if the neighbors came to me and said, we're building a go-kart and we have no welder, I know what I'd be doing on a Sunday morning. So if you don't have a welder, it's not a skill you're comfortable with. If anything I'm doing, I'm showing you how to do, you're not comfortable with, I guarantee you can find somebody locally that will either help for free or, you know, they do it for a case of sodas or, you know, a dozen fresh baked cookies. Um, don't let not having a welder or not having something stop you. This is still doable. And along the way, I'll try to show you a few different ways to do things. Um, if you're still struggling with it, welding it is the easiest, cleanest way to get where I want to go and I'm capable of it. So there's no reason not to. But I'll try to show a few options along the way for things. This spot here, there's not many things. I, I could bolt some metal in here. I could use screws or rivets, but I would end up undoing it down the road. So I'm not going that route here. But just, just saying, don't, don't avoid the project just because you don't have the tools. Um, reach out for help. I, I guarantee you, people will help you. So uh, I'm going to fire up the welder. I'm going to put on my helmet and gloves as always. And uh, I'm going to get a couple of tack welds on this so it's sitting up where I want it. And 
we're going to start looking at some other stuff here. Now here's the thing guys, we're building this for the kids, but dad wants to drive it too. And uh, I'm recording this and I have no idea how I look sitting inside of this thing, but I'm not a little person. I am 6'3", 240 pounds, so probably not going to fit as well as the kids, but with the seat up, you know, pedal placement, as long as I'm careful with things, it's not going to be so bad but I do want something that I can tear around. We can use as a family, you know, the neighbors can play with. I want something that can be passed around. So uh, making sure I fit is a pretty big priority for me. But as you can see, we've got, if you use your imagination, kids, use your imagination here. We can make this into anything, but this is where you guys are gonna shine. You have no limits. Nobody's told you that you can't do something. Um, this is the best part of doing this, is that it can look like anything you want. So, in my head, my vision was, you know, the big motor, the big tires. So, let's take this body and let's throw some tires beside it. And let's, uh, let's take a look at some things. Let's see if we can't make a really good plan out of this. So let's go over what we've got right here. We've got our wheelbarrow body. This is where we're starting. This was the beginning of the vision. Out back here. Now, these are quite obviously not your normal go-kart tires. Uh, I picked these up off of Marketplace for $15 for the pair. They're off of a Cub Cadet lawnmower. They are a 24 by 10.5 tire on a 12 inch rim. Um, I got them because on the tea bucket hot rod vision I had going, they kind of fit. They look like a street tread. They fit the vision I was after. And they were cheap. These, these aren't cheap tires if you go out and buy them new. And I couldn't have bought the wheels normally for what I picked these up for. Um... I'm not sure I would buy them new, but for what I got them for, this is what I, we're going to use on this project. Now up front, this is typical go-kart standard. This is a six and a half horse, six and a half horse? It is. This is a six and a half horsepower horizontal shaft motor. Now this is gonna be the same kind of motor that comes on generators this one came on a pressure washer um, you can buy these universal at princess auto harbor freight just about anywhere every manufacturer makes them there are a million chinese knockoffs i was given this one because the pressure washer 
that was attached to it seized. Now, most of the go-kart parts you go out and buy are based around this motor. With this sitting here, ironically, this is the, the cheap, easy stuff. Um, from here, you need a clutch for the motor. You need your chain drive, you need your sprockets. The rear end is going to need an axle, hubs to mount the wheels to. We need to worry about brakes, pillow block bearings to mount everything. Um, we need to work out a throttle for this. Um, these units are great for go-karts because they fit anywhere, they're compact, everything is self-contained, but these motors are designed to run at constant RPMs. You flip the throttle all the way up, you leave it there. We need to work out a throttle for this. We still need to worry about the front end. Um, we need steering and wheels and bearings and all of the stuff associated with that. We need pedals. Obviously, this is nowhere close to done. So as I go, I'm going to, throughout the videos, I'll try to break down everything involved, both in the ways I'm doing it and other ways you can do it. And I'll be honest with you right now, while this is the standard, this is not the route I'm choosing to go, and I'll explain to you in a minute why. Um, I think this is a great idea. It's super common. You can get the parts anywhere. I just have another option at hand. Originally, I was going to use this, and for all of the reasons I've said. Um, every go-kart you see out there, if you look under the back, it has something similar to this. They work great, they last forever, they're easy to replace. Um, I just don't think it's what I want. And I, I'm gonna to explain to everybody in a minute. But this is kind of the starting point. This is where everything begins. If you can't get it to this point and you can't see where it's headed, it, it gets really difficult to build it. You need to be able to go, okay, I want my motor here, so I need a frame, and the frame needs to go to the back axle. And uh, I normally do this stuff in CAD. I do it in computer, computer design. For this project, we're going to draw it out on paper with pen, crayons, and whatever. I'm going to get the kids involved. They're going to help design it. Um... Obviously, this video, my kids are not here right now, but believe me, this is, uh, I'm breaking down the core of what we're doing. I want to get you all excited about this project, because I'm really excited about this one. And uh, after today, the kids are going to be involved every step of the way. Um, but this is kind of... This is the point you need to get to to get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this motor out of the way. And I'm going to come back to this in later videos. I will sit down and I will explain how the clutches and drives work. How we can do throttle. Um, I have this motor so I may very well build another go-kart later on. Um, but when you see the plan, you'll understand you'll understand why we're we're going a different direction. So here it is, guys. This is the donor for the project. And I'm going to explain to you why. Now, I told you about the clutch, the drives, the throttle, all of that. Now, those horizontal shaft motors are a great motor, but they are designed to run at a constant RPM for extended period of time. Um, I'm a believer that a motor that's designed to run like that is not the best when it is idle, full throttle, idle, full throttle. You got to remember that the kids are going to beat on these and I know I'm going to beat up on it. Now, this particular quad is a 200cc 
imported knockoff. Um, these weren't super expensive new, but about 10, 15, 20 years ago, these got super popular. And now if you cruise marketplace, you can pick up a quad like this for between a hundred and five hundred dollars. And at the end of the day, buying a quad like this for $500, I would argue puts us farther ahead and I'm going to break it down right now. Now, starting at the motor. You need a clutch to transmit the, pro the power. You need a centrifugal cr clutch so that it's just not taking off. Now you can get those on Amazon starting for say $30. And uh, pardon me, this is in Canadian dollars. Americans are outside of the country. You can do the conversion. Um, you can get them for starting at about $30. And that's kind of your ba most basic centrifugal clutch. It just has a weight that as it spins faster, the weight goes out, applies friction, and it pushes you forward. From there, you need your chain. It's another $30, $40. You need your rear sprocket. You need your rear axle, which off the top of my head, I'm not sure. You need two pillow blocks at the back to support your axle minimum. You're $20, $25, $30 a piece on those. That's just to get the power to the back. You need a brake. Um, in the front, you're going to need front hubs. You're going to need steering. You're going to need, you know, your front end's not going to have brakes. Um, you need your throttle linkage. You're going to have to build something for that motor, brackets and such, or go out and buy it. Um, if we break it all down, by the time you buy front hubs, your steering components, your clutch, now that clutch is basic. If you go with something a little fancier, what most people do is uh, the bigger torque converter style with the slip belt in it. That's gonna run you more like 100, 150, $200. Um, if you start to add up all of these components, just in the, the clutch, the chain, the sprocket, the bearings, your front hubs, your steering, if you go out and buy all these parts, which realistically, most people aren't going to buy used because they get beaten up, they wear out pretty quick. You're gonna get into two, three, four hundred dollars really fast. After that, we've still got wheels. We've, the brake alone in the back could be hundred, two hundred dollars. Um, If we break all that down, we get to $500 really fast on a go-kart. If you were to go out and buy this for $500, at the end of the day, we can take all of the components from this, including wheels and tires, and use them all. Now I have my rear tires that I want. Um, I'm kind of set on them at the moment. Might change my mind, but right now I'm set on them and I really like them. But we have four wheels on this. We have front bearing hubs. We have a rear shaft. We have all of our drive stuff. We have rear brake and this quad has front brakes. It has drums up front. So we have brakes at all four corners, which is a really big deal when we're talking safety with the kids. But I'll tell you the biggest selling point for this for me was that this has reverse. This has a shifter that has forward, neutral, and reverse. And I can't count the number of times as a kid where I smashed into something and had to get out and get my buddies to help pull me back. And I'm probably gonna end up doing that again as an adult. But this has everything I need. Now, I could fire it up and use it as a quad. But to be honest, the tires don't hold air. The steering is bent. It needs a ton of electrical work. It doesn't, I know it runs, but it doesn't run right at this moment. It, it was given to me by a guy that worked at the business next door to me before we moved. And uh, I was gonna put it together for the kids. And then I realized that honestly, we're gonna have more fun with the go-kart than we are with the quad right now and I can do some pretty cool stuff with this. Now, I, I will go back in a later video and I will show you 
all of the components to make the other motor work. I'll break it all down. I can show you that. I'll pull down some website links and, and break it all down. But when I was doing that for myself, I realized that everything I needed was right here. And that's the reason I went this route. And obviously everybody's going to be along for the ride on this one and you'll get to see how it pans out. But I think this is going to be a really good option. Um, everything we need is here and this motor is designed to be run just like that. And these offshore quads, we can get all of the parts, we can buy the brakes, we can buy the bearings, all of the cables, everything, they are readily available and they're cheap. The fact that I was given this quad and the wheelbarrow was free and I've got $15 into the tires, at this point I have $15 into this entire project. And we're going to see if we can't put this on the road with the kids in it for under 500 bucks. Done. Total. Our consumables, our paint, everything. That's my goal, is to keep it realistically under $500. And uh, I think we can do it, and I get to show you all how. So there we go. That's what we're going to do. Now, I said at the beginning, this entire series is going to focus specifically on being kid-friendly. I want this to be a, seri a series of videos that the kids can watch with mom and dad, aunt and uncle, whoever. I want this to be something that you guys can look to for guidance to do this yourselves. And because of that, I'm going to look for your feedback on this one. Um, if the kids want clarification, drop me a comment. I, I am excited to do this one because I think sometimes when we're doing these projects for ourselves, we kind of skim over the basic stuff because we assume that you already know. And uh, I know I'm guilty of that sometimes. When I'm showing somebody how to do something, I forget to start at the beginning. And this one, we are going to start at the absolute beginning. Um, I know these aren't going to be for most people because a, a lot of people aren't going to be able to sit through them and understand it all. I want to be able to break it down so that you guys can do that. That's important to me. And uh, after today, the videos are all going to involve the kids, um, my kids' friends, whoever wants to get involved. We're going to build this together so that we can play with it together. I'm going to take all of you along for the ride. So I really hope you're as excited for this one as I am. Um, this is going to be a blast. Um, so for today, thank you for tuning in. Um, thank you for checking this out. And I hope you come back for more of them. Uh, I want to work really hard that anything that we're building this go-kart, it's going to be more kid-friendly than anything else I do. And... If I slip up and you notice something I'm doing that's not, call me out on it. Um, I want this, this series specifically to be for everybody. And I'm stressing that because I'm also stressing it to myself. So thank you for being here today. Um, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Do me a favor. Um, if you enjoyed this, you're going to enjoy what's coming next too. Um, like the video, share it around, tell people about it. I'd, I'd love to hear from everybody on this one. Um, and go out and enjoy the day. And I'll see you on the next one.